Welcome back. It's Recovery Sort Of. I'm Jason, a guy that didn't record a new episode this week. Hey, everybody. So with the summer schedule, with people going on vacations, with people just having time with their families in the sunshine, uh, we did not record an episode for this week. But what we did is we went back and picked an old episode that happens to be like maybe my favorite episode that we've ever recorded. Um, It's about ego. I felt like I identified in and could laugh and relate a lot. So if you weren't with us way back at episode 59 to hear this episode, it's a, it's a classic. If you're listening for the first 15 minutes and you say, I'm bored as hell, just fast forward a little bit to our, our quiz. It gets highly entertaining. Uh, and everybody, be out there, stay safe, and have a great week. Recovery Sort Of is a podcast where we discuss recovery and addiction topics from the perspective of people living in long-term recovery. This podcast does not intend to represent the views of any particular group, organization, or fellowship. The views expressed here are solely the opinion of its contributors. Be advised there may be strong language or topics of an adult nature. Welcome back to Recovery Sort Of. My name's Billy. I'm a person in long-term recovery. I'm Jason. I'm a guy in long-term recovery as well. And this week, I wanted to talk about the ego and how it serves or doesn't serve me well in my later recovery, why it's dangerous to me as an addict, and I think to people in general. Like most of these subjects, you know, where they come up in my head, I'm like, oh, this would be interesting to talk about. And then I do a little, like, research outside of what I already think I know because I think I'm an egomaniac and I know everything there is to know about ego and why do any research? (laughs) I already know what it means. I already know all about it. I'll just teach these peasants about ego. (laughs) (laughs) And I know how it relates to me and what it means to me and all about me. So perfect. (laughs) I'm good at that. But it actually came up on my radar a week or two ago. I was watching a weird series documentaries and one of them was on Sigmund Freud and his some of his crazy ass theories, <laughs> which which they call him, I guess, the father of modern psychoanalysis. Yeah. But some of what he believed was pretty crazy, but I guess pretty uh, thought provoking for the time. Anyway, one of these ideas was about the ego. He believed we had a primal or, I don't know, sensual side of us called the id. And then we had a more moral and ethical side of us called the superego. And our ego was the thinking part of us that navigated between those two areas. How do we balance out like our primal instincts and our intellectual thinking? Mm. And so for him or in his theory, uh, it wasn't really like a good or bad thing. It was this realm of where we needed to navigate and in any case he he never actually even used the word ego he used the german word for ego but really ego is a latin word for i as in i am and it's just come nowadays to be known as basically our own personal interpretation of what we intellectually think about ourselves Hmm. (laughs) that makes sense i mean i kind of relate to his idea right like uh, on the one hand there's the animal side like hey boobies like boobies right (laughs) Right. and then the other side of like i want to be a classy distinguished individual and a gentleman that's respected in my community and how do i make both of those things work in my actions yeah and so not to get too far off on that (laughs) but one of the interesting things about freud was he opened up this area of like sexual or sensual exploration um as you know before that historically in the 1800s people were incredibly uptight you know right. about any kind of sexuality or sensuality or or any of that stuff and some of his ideas delved into that the sexual side of things the sexual nature of people uh, actually encouraging people to explore some of that about themselves making it kind of okay so he wasn't popular amongst the christians that was the cocaine talking (laughs) yeah that was it but in any case you know nowadays we kind of look at the ego differently and typically i think we associate it with like arrogance if you say someone's like an egomaniac it's someone that 
thinks highly of themselves or thinks of themselves better than others. I don't know the way it's described, at least in a lot of the psychological writing. It's not necessarily that. It can also be bad. We can use it in bad ways to think about ourselves. It more boils down to like the storylines we continually tell ourselves in our heads that aren't always based on facts. A lot of times they're based on thoughts or feelings in the moment. Hmm. So, for example, I go into work and we have this ongoing problem and I find the solution and I get cheered by all my employees. You know, yeah, you solved the problem. I think, great, I am so smart. You know what I mean? I am the fucking smartest guy <laughs> here. And then an hour later, it's like I forget to email back, you know, whatever. The president of the company sent me an email for something. And, you know, it's like, I'm so fucking stupid. I can't believe, you know, I did this. What a dummy, mm. you know. And in that same span of time, based on what my intellectual brain is telling me, I can think I am the smartest person in the room or the dumbest person in the room. Gotcha. <laughs> and so, you know, neither of those is necessarily true. But both of them in that moment, in my reality, are 100% true. And I will make decisions about how I proceed with the situation based on this ego. So, like, the ego is this part of our brain that, like, it's always changing. It's not like a static thing. It's not like I always think this way about myself. But I do have storylines that I tell myself in my head kind of over and over and over again that will get me into trouble. I know, like, one of those for myself is I got to watch out because people are always trying to take advantage of me. Everybody's trying to get something from me. Everybody wants something from me. I got to be on guard. I got to keep everybody at a distance. Hmm. Another one for me personally is like I struggle a lot of times with low self-esteem or not feeling good enough. So I feel like I got to overachieve at a lot of things that I do in life just to feel like I'm not less than everyone else. That's interesting because you always talk about how you are an optimist about seeing the positive in people. So to think they're always out to get you is really contradictory. And this is where I think for an addict, the ego gets kind of extra dangerous or, or super dangerous. What I've learned in some of this research and then looking at how recovery works in our lives, what I really need to figure out or find for myself is a state of humility, like the true version of myself. Mm. And it Reminds me of a prayer or a little saying I heard a guy say one time at a convention somewhere or might have been on a CD somewhere, but he closed out and he said, God, help me to see myself not as I see me because I'm not that bad. Help me to not see myself as my friends see me because I'm not that good, but help me to see me as you see me because that's who I really am. And so for me, like my understanding of ego after all this is that what I'm trying to do is figure out that sort of how God sees me part of things. Like I'm not all good or all bad. I'm probably a mix of both at different times. I'm a mix of these different things. And an honest self-appraisal of who I am is what I'm really looking for. Yeah, I miss I miss some of my ego. I mean, I... I know I still have some, but I, I miss some parts of it. I'm just thinking back, like before I did some really serious therapy work, I came into recovery and felt weak and, and not manly enough and not tough enough. And that led me to go to the gym and just work out like crazy. Right. And I got bigger and I got stronger and I, I looked pretty good with my shirt off. And I was like, God, this is great. Right. But it was all based in self-hatred, really. It was because I felt so low about me that I had to have this perfect, like, you know, was aiming for, like, the Greek statue body or whatever without the tiny penis. And then <laughs> I, I went to this therapy and, and got better, and, and now I don't have that drive as much, right? So I still hit the gym, but I got to, like, force myself now, and it's not as fun, and... And, you know, there's days I skip it and, like, eat snacks instead, like Tasty Cakes. And, and it turns out that the ultimate outcome of that is not looking as good, right? <laughs> but I feel way better. And so it's kind of a give and take. It's almost like ego can motivate us to do these incredible feats in life, but it's based out of not liking ourselves enough and doesn't really lead to satisfaction, right? It doesn't really lead to the fulfillment after we've accomplished this great task. It's just it's not enough. We need another great task. And so you're kind of like, you're either going to accomplish great things or you're going to be happy with yourself. <laughs> well, and that was 
some of the interesting things, you know, I, I was reading through some of these articles and realizing, I guess, at least it seemed like from a psychological perspective, you know, they didn't look at ego as all bad all the time. Like is in a person in recovery, I'm constantly looking at my ego as this bad thing or this thing I'm supposed to be avoiding or staying away from or or not letting run my life. We hear ego is like easing God out, you know, that sort of language. You know, in, in a lot of the reading I was doing, they don't look at it that way. They kind of look at some of those positive things that you were talking about that come about as a result of, I guess, what you would call ego. It's like, you know, if people give us praise for being a good artist, like, is it terrible that we say, hey, I'm a, I'm a pretty good artist? You know, a lot of people tell me I'm a good artist. So is it terrible to think that about yourself? It definitely seems contrary to that prayer you just mentioned. <laughs> well, I mean, that's it doesn't necessarily mean that whatever god doesn't see us as a good artist where it gets us in trouble is when we become like egomaniacs or when we get an overinflated ego so the goal is to keep our ego in check or at a level to where we're not lacking self-esteem or self-worth or self-motivation so can we have self-esteem and self-worth outside of ego through a humble means if humility is the opposite and to some extent like just a honest self appraisal of yeah I'm okay. Well, I think from the technical definition, that's still ego. Any sort of self appraisal is still ego. Hmm. I mean, if you're look just looking at the definition of the word ego, you're giving an appraisal of yourself. It can be on. I mean, that's what you're shooting for is an honest appraisal. <laughs> you're not looking for an overinflated or artificial version of yourself. So to leave the ego, I will just say I am. <laughs> So obviously you're going to teach us about ego and what is apparently, according to experts, the healthy version of it. And I'm going to argue with you. <laughs> well, I actually was thinking more sort of going the other way of looking at like as an addict. So why is it like, why is my ego so dangerous as an addict that I have to sort of keep it in check or keep it in lock or, or always sort of be on guard from it? Whereas I don't know, maybe... And of course, this is where we always debate like normal people. And I might change normal. I might change that to healthy people. Maybe that's a smaller percentage of people that's are nobody. healthy. Where are they? <laughs> what the hell but, is that? <laughs> but healthy people are in a state of, you know, their egos in check. They're not egomaniacs or egocentric. You know, they're, they're people that are healthy. But as an addict, you know, I think my self-centeredness drives me to always be thinking about myself. How is this going to serve me? What's it going to do for me? How am I going to get what I want? While NASA searches for alien life, I'm going to search the planet for healthy people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in recovery language, that self-centeredness of my disease is what seems to be at the core of my affliction. Mm. I am always thinking about what I'm thinking about myself <laughs> or how the world or, you know, it's always how about what I'm thinking. Yeah. And that will drive me to do irrational things. It'll drive me to, you know, seek out things that are going to hurt me. It'll cause me to overindulge in things, to make excuses of, well, I'll figure it out. I'll take care of it. It'll be okay. Whatever. Justification, rationalization. And so for me, I think I would always find myself in a place where I either thought really highly of my, like I was always measuring myself against whoever I was around. So I was either way better than everyone else in the room or way less than everyone else in the room. And then that directed how I acted in my addiction. Is it still ego if you measure yourself against yourself? <laughs> yeah. I'm asking, I, like, I think that's the healthy way to go. Like, hey, I'm much better today than I have been previously. That's great. Oh, well, I think, I mean, again, is it ego? Yes. Is it egocentric or egomania to do that? I don't think so. Mm. I mean, I think that's probably a healthy thing to do. That's one of the, actually, one of the things they give you as a tool is like self-introspection, you know, looking at yourself, I guess, a little more deeply. I have just always tended to see the ego as negative, even though psychology seems to tell us that there's this healthy amount of it we can have. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, a healthy amount of sugar or healthy amount of crack or something like I just <laughs> for some reason you know that healthy glass of wine every day that's good for you I I just tend to not really agree with not that. really I, I just I think there's 
I don't know. I think maybe we're better off completely without it. But that's why I want to I want to hear the definitions you found and I want to see the information or hear the information, I guess. And then I want to debate it. I'm down. OK, so one of the healthy ways that I heard ego described or it could be used in a healthy way is that we all have positive and negative self-esteem that we put on ourselves and our ego is kind of the balancing of those two things. So if we only think negatively of ourselves all the time, we have a really negative self-image. If we only think positive of ourselves all the time, that's where we get our arrogance and things. And both of those things make up ego. So a healthy balance of both is what we need, not an absence of both of those things. Interesting. So I would say, okay, so ego is all about the I statements. So it's I am good or I am bad. It doesn't really make a difference. So I'm hearing what you, like, I hear that. Yes. Who says we wouldn't be better without any of that? Like, I think I would be better off if I never bothered to think of I or label I. I mean, I got to think about, you know, oh, I'm tired. I need sleep. Well, I think as an addict, there's certain areas we need to do some self-reflection. We need to look at our behaviors, our actions and attitudes, reflect on how they're affecting people around us. I believe that's healthy. So I think where my I'm, ego believes that's healthy. Right. Yeah, that's all your <laughs> ego, buddy. I'm thinking it's more like ego is judgments or statements about who we are as people. Whereas the self-assessment we do in a 12-step fellowship, at least I hope, is more a statement or judgment of our actions and doesn't speak to who we are as a person. And so this, there's no story to tell ourselves about what this means about us, right? There's no ego in it. It's just, hey, when I treat people shitty, I don't like how I feel. Let me change that. Not I'm a shitty person, not I'm a great person and should treat them shitty because I'm better than them. I would agree if we were aspiring to be sort of like the Shaolin monk kind of people. Like, You're not? Uh, no. <laughs> that's not no, our goal? Not at all. Damn. Ideally, I think that's a great place to be is like I never really think about myself. I only think about how the world around me is going and then I act according to my nature. I don't believe that's practical. I mean, that's one of those states that we sort of shoot for but know that we're never going to achieve and maybe that's a cop out that i don't have to work so hard but <laughs> i don't know i that's definitely what i'm going for i want to be you know one with everything I'm, I'm down but i guess the scary part for me when i hear people who came in you know the office into therapy and a lot of the conflict that comes up is because whatever they really need to do or whatever's going on in their life does not fit in with their life story and that life story, I think, is what the ego controls and tells us, oh, well, this is the kind of person you are. You can't change that. You can't deal with situations like this. You can't think outside of the person you are. You can't change the person you are. And I just feel like without that, if I don't tell myself a story, if I just say it's easier if it's not a, a story, right? If I say I'm a very liberal thinker, this is who I am. That's hard to change. But if I say, ah, so far, that thinking has made more sense to me. But if I ever hear something that sounds better, I'm not. Honestly, and I think you do this a lot because a lot of times when we come in here and we have our debates or disagreements, you'll say, I'm not really married to this idea. It's just what I've had so far. And if I hear something better, I'm open to it. That's what I think not having the ego is. It's just not being married to ideas, right? It's not telling ourselves a story of this is who I am and now I, I'm don't go outside of that box. It's more just, ah, well, this is what I've been doing, but whatever. Yes, I agree to that to an extent. I would say that it's important for me, though, to have some values or beliefs or things about myself that I still hold strong. I mean, as far as my self-image or self-worth. So sort of circle back a little bit when you talked about what you started that with as an addict so i can look at myself as an addict and say oh i've been using all this time and i'm a failure and i'm a piece of shit and i use drugs over all these other things or i can take what may be i don't know 
positive aspects of that and be like, look, you know, you made it through some really tough shit. You survived through what some people would consider like trauma in their lives and made it to this point. Like you are a stronger person because you made it through these experiences. That is still sort of a reflection of ego, but it would hopefully be used in a more humbling way than it would be as some sort of arrogant or egotistical way. Hmm. I think it's more empathetic, but I don't know. I think they're both true. Yeah. I was a piece of shit and I wouldn't have made it through without drugs. Well, and that's part of the problem with our ego is that it can tell us both of those things at the same time. Like it's not this overly rational, logical thing because it doesn't make sense a lot of times. You know, it can contradict itself constantly. But we still think it's healthy to have a part of us that doesn't make sense. <laughs> or we need to train our ego to make sense. Correct. Well, yes, it's huh. we need to it's like self-esteem. You know what I mean? If I say I have healthy like it's it's not good to have no self-esteem at all. Self-esteem is a thing that I should have, but I shouldn't have too little of it or too much of it. I should have a balance of it that keeps me like grounded and level and hopefully reality, but maybe not. I, I, in hindsight, I just feel like I want Jenny here for her Buddhist version of this. I feel like it would align with mine and help my ego. <laughs> Yeah, and I get that. So I do understand. I, I do some a lot of meditation, and there's a practice that I do in the app, and it's very much about that stuff, separating ourselves. Now, the way I understand it, at least through the practice that I've been working on, is it's really trying to step outside of that thinking mind and to understand that that thinking mind isn't always giving us the clear, best, rightest answer. That you know, my thinking, even though I think it's always right, isn't always right. So it's not that I'm looking for an absence in, in meditation. It's not that I'm looking for like an absence of any thinking. I'm just trying to get – it has its own place. You know what I mean? Like I need to sit there and think, is this a thought? Is this a feeling? And then what can I do with it and what should I do with it? You know, those are all things that go into the thought process versus – I just have a feeling I'm angry, so I go punch whoever made me angry. You know, that's like the opposite of what I need to do. Right. <laughs> like, that's what I did in addiction. You know what I mean? I'm hurt. I'm angry. I want to make this go away. So I'll go use drugs. And I don't play that out in like a rational, healthy way. I just react to the feelings. And through meditation, I try to kind of step back and go, well, wait a minute. You're angry. So let's look at like, why are you angry? Am I, that might be helpful to look at. And is the reason you're angry really rational or irrational? And that might be something to look at. And then I can make an appropriate decision moving forward. And so a lot of times, you know, with my ego, it can be the same thing. Like I feel a certain way about myself. Was what I'm telling myself about myself true? Or is it really just based in some feeling that I'm having in the moment? Hmm. Sounds a lot like the book I was reading a while back, The Untethered Soul which talks about how the brain, I know it sounds stupid, but has a mind of its own, really. Like, it's not us, even though we so closely associate ourselves with being the brain in 2020. That's what we mm -hmm. think. And that during meditation, and really the ultimate goal of our life is to realize that the brain thinks and talks, but we are not that talker. We're not even really the listener. We're the awareness behind all of that just watching the conversation. And when we can get to that place, that's when we're really living in the moment and at ease and peace. To me, that says, I don't want the ego. Like it can be there, but I don't want to be a part of it personally. I want to be kind of watching it and being like, look at that dumbass. But I guess that would make me the ego again if I was judging. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Damn it. It's always there. <laughs> and I guess that's more how I saw it or, or took it was that it's always there. Like I can hope for an absence of it, but that's probably unrealistic. Right. So the best I can do in this current 
current state that I am in personally is try to keep it in check and at a healthy level. Mine flared up yesterday in the car. We were driving <laughs> to my mom's and my wife was asking the kids what kind of cookies they wanted to make for Christmas this year. And there were sugar cookies and gingerbread. And I was like, could we make snickerdoodles? And she said, you can't decorate snickerdoodles because the decoration is what makes them snickerdoodles. And this turned into an argument because I was offended because I was like, are you, I felt stupid, right? You're going to tell me I can't decorate a snickerdoodle? Why? <laughs> and so it, it lasted. Like, this was like uh, an hours long thing. And I'm like, what the fuck? I just have to say, my head went right there, too. Like, why can't you decorate a snickerdoodle? Well, <laughs> motherfucking Betty Crocker. <laughs> dot com says you can yeah. <laughs> so i ain't saying i'm right but <laughs> no matter what i didn't feel right at the end of the night <laughs> right. it didn't feel very right so yeah apparently you can put decorations on sugar cookies and it doesn't make them other types of cookies but if you decorate a snickerdoodle uh, according to my wife it's not a snickerdoodle <laughs> anymore I, I don't know but yeah either way the point was my ego was involved in it right it was all about how i felt from her statement and like had i just not given a fuck that she had her statement about not like i okay like i could have just sat there and thought mm, i like snickerdoodles and then we'd have never argued that would actually be part of the problem at least my goal through meditation is to understand or to be able to hopefully recognize when my ego is flaring up like oh this is my ego telling me that i need to be right and win this argument I need to kind of wind it back. And the story that I tell myself that I need to be right all the time is a bad part of my ego. I don't even want to win the argument anymore. I just want the other person to acknowledge they're wrong. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, it's not about what, like, I don't care about being right. That doesn't fucking do nothing for me. I just get annoyed when people I feel are wrong and don't own that. <laughs> it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Whatever. Sorry, wife. <laughs> when I first got into recovery, I think because my life was such a mess, it was easy to be really humble and really think, mm. I don't want to say lowly of myself because I was working on, well, that's not true. I was true. definitely feeling I lowly. Yeah, I felt pretty lowly. I was just thinking I had to do some like those positive affirmations and things. I had my sponsor tell me like I should do positive affirmations, tell myself I love myself and I'm a good person and all it because I felt like such a piece of shit. Yeah. But Again, I think the either two negative aspects of myself, like that was still my ego telling me that stuff. It wasn't just about the arrogance. All that, you're a piece of shit, you're worthless, you're no good. Like all that was my ego, and I needed to get that in check. Yeah, I don't think that was a good spot either. I liked the actions from that place that I was in, but I don't want to have those actions because I feel like I'm not worth acting different. And that was basically where I was early on. I'm, I'm right there with you. But I like the actions it brought, the, the humble type actions. I just want to be there without having to feel shitty about me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> it took a lot of the, the work that I did through the steps to kind of help bring me around to a better way of thinking of some of that. And it was really interesting, and we'll get into it in a few minutes, the things that they say help balance your ego, the things that help keep your ego in check were, uh, not surprisingly, I should say, were a lot of things that we do in step work. Hmm. It was understanding that I needed help from other people, understanding that I needed powers greater than myself to help get through life, that I wasn't the most important person in the room. <laughs> like all of those things that were the way that I had been living my life most of my addiction. You know what I mean? I could take care of myself. I don't need anyone's help. I'm going to be fine. Everyone else is my problem. Like all those things were my ego keeping me stuck in that addiction, keeping me stuck making the same terrible choices over and over again. Hmm. Interesting. So let's get into it then. Let's do it. So we'll do the questions. Then we'll get into the signs that you're an egomaniac and then what you can do about it. So... I already took the quiz. I already know what my score was. We'll take it for you Sweet. if you want. Yeah. Uh, well, my ego says I'm going to beat you because if I get higher than you, then I'll say I won. And if I get lower than you, I'll say I won. <laughs> well, I took two different quizzes so I can give you my score on the lowest one. But it wasn't this one. Because <laughs> my ego says I need to win. And I didn't like this question at first because I thought, ooh, that's kind of tough. Ooh. How would you rank your attractiveness on a scale from one to five? 
Ooh. Five being the most attractive. Yeah. The other ones get better. This is hard. I want to be honest, but I also want to win. <laughs> four. Okay. I think I was a four as well. You just lost in a game. How do you react? Rematch? This game is stupid anyway. Congratulate my opponent. Yell and or throw something. Mm, that's tricky. Like, is this a game <laughs> against one of my sons or somebody I like? Or is this? Yeah, I immediately thought my children. I'm thinking like playing online. I, I want to yell and throw something. <laughs> <laughs> let's go with uh, congratulate. I don't, I don't know if that's always true, but let's go with that. Three, I guess. That's probably never true for me. I probably answered this game is stupid anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I with my sons i'm like yeah hey that's awesome i hope oh gosh i'm probably worse with my son. <laughs> <laughs> i really don't want to lose to him that's funny i can't beat a 12 year old i saw well, i can pretend i did it on purpose <laughs> <laughs> is that it yeah i never thought of that strategy oh it's a good one. i need to train my ego better See? Then, I can, <laughs> then i could get a positive result <laughs> if you want something done right i do it myself Hire someone really good. Work as a team. Oh, I'm definitely doing that shit myself. That's me. <laughs> I do it myself. Not a fucking doubt. <laughs> yeah, right. It's the way that I approach most of life. I'll just do it myself. People offer to do shit for me that would make my life easier, and I'm like, ah, I just can't let you. <laughs> I just got to do it me. I think that I can do most things better than people that are paid to do it for a living. <laughs> I definitely wish I could just be my own doctor. After watching a few YouTube videos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, Oh, I could do that shit. I've seen people that do that. They're stupid. I watch like, Doogie Howser, MD. <laughs> I definitely don't need a fucking doctor. There are two attractive people you might be interested in at a table near you. In between their talking and laughing, they keep glancing in your direction. What's the deal? They're making fun of you. They want you. You have something on your face. Or how should I know? Oh, they want me. <laughs> Though I, I have noticed as I get a little older, the thoughts creep in that may, maybe I do have something like a boogie or something. <laughs> yeah. That one, I would think I have something on my face. I would be curious to hear my wife's answers for me about these questions, <laughs> honestly. Right. I think I'm doing honest, but she, she might disagree. Yeah. Now, I didn't even think of that. And Jen was sitting there when I answered a couple of these, so I should have asked her. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Are you living the life you deserve? Yes, and it sucks. No, I deserve better. No, I deserve worse. Yes, I suppose so, and it's great. I don't like the fucking question because I don't <laughs> I don't think we get what we deserve, and I don't understand that completely. I guess I'm going to have to go with it's great, whatever the great one was, okay. because my life is great. I just, I'm not a believer in anything about deserving or completely separate from my life understanding. How many mirrors do you have in your house? Not enough? Let me see. One in each bathroom and in the bedroom. Mirrors are my preferred wall decoration. I don't know totally, but I'm going to guess one in each bathroom and one in the bedroom. Sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, that's what we have. I mean, I don't know that I'm opposed to mirrors. I just don't have a bunch in my house. It just so happens that the ones I have right now are like not convenient to look at and useless most of the time. So I just, <laughs> whatever. I don't pay attention anymore. I've gotten better with age. I can answer this one for oh, you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know what my answer was. Fill in the blank. You are smarter than blank people. Few people, some people, most people, all people. Oh, I want to say most, but I really think my honest answer is all. <laughs> That's the fucking worst. I don't think I'm smarter than everybody. I just don't meet people smarter than me. <laughs> Fuck. That's oh, terrible. It is terrible. And I only say that because I think the same way. And see, I, I guess this... I maybe plays out how we view ego so yes i believe that's not a healthy ego but the fact that now i like recognize that i think that way and i can catch myself before reacting to that a lot of times like that's where doing some actually work on my ego helps me like yes that's what i think and i don't know if i mean maybe one day that'll change but i it's just my knee-jerk reaction to most things is to think that i'm smarter than most people and can figure shit out without other people's help i think my issue with that question is i don't sit here and believe i am smarter than every other human like i don't believe that so to say all is kind of wrong but at the same time if you said name somebody that's smarter than you I don't have anybody to name. So I just like, I, I don't know how to answer that. How can I say most when I can't name people smarter than me? 
or I'll get into a intellectual debate on well, what do you mean by smarter? Yes. Like, there's people that are book smarter, right. but they might not be. You know, I'm sure, there's people that know science shit that I have no oh, idea. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> but they don't understand their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't live my life. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's a hard one. So you are in a heated argument when suddenly you realize you were wrong all along. What do you do? Ooh. Admit it, change the subject, get upset. What? I'm never wrong. Uh, I think I admit it. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to do in a heated argument. That definitely changes it a little. <laughs> yeah. I might have to admit it later. But no, I, I don't have any problem, I don't think, admitting when I'm wrong, when I see that I'm wrong. Hmm. It's seeing it, I think, is the problem. If someone is better than you at something, you feel jealous, motivated, angry, defeated or impressed impressed and jealous and i was motivated i don't like when people are better than no me. Mm. Uh, there's just too many fucking things and i can't be good at all of them so that's interesting like i don't need to be better than them but it will definitely motivate me to get better mm. like I, I i have a weird i don't need to be better than everyone i just need to be better than like 90% of the people, and then I'm okay. I don't need to be the best, you know? There's always going to be people that are better than me, and I'm okay with that part, but I need to be better than most. I can't be average. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy learning new things? No, it's boring. Yes, it's interesting. Eh, depends on what it is. I prefer to teach others what I know. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had the answer till that one. <laughs> Threw me for a loop. I I say the third one. The depends eh, on what depends it is. on what it is. Yeah, I was not enjoying learning how to do our new website Friday, <laughs> but then once I started getting it, I was like, okay, hey, we got a website. This is kind of fun. That was a plug for our website in case you guys didn't realize it. Uh, recovery sort of dot com, which is well under construction, so don't expect too much when you go there. But it's there. You are forty eight percent an egomaniac. Ooh, less than half. But but is that good or bad? <laughs> you have a healthy ego. It says you've got just about the perfect amount of ego. Ooh, big how enough did I know? to give you com <laughs> <laughs> big enough to give you confidence, but not so big that it gives you a big head to go with it. That's good because I already have a big head. And you did. Uh, I if lower is better, you beat me. I got a fifty. Oh, but still, right there so, in the middle. Yeah, that's good. Pretty close. Yeah, it was interesting. Some of my answers were slightly different, but I guess maybe I was better on some and worse on others. It's funny because five minutes ago I told you I would believe we shouldn't have any amount of ego, but now that I have a really good healthy amount. <laughs> right, it's great. Yeah, now it's like, of course I have a good healthy amount of ego. How how wouldn't I? <laughs> well, that just ruined the test score. Yeah, as long as mine's good, that's good. <laughs> like, that's a healthy thing. Signs that you need to get your ego in check. And what I found really fascinating about this was it was I, I found the information on a doctor's website talking oh. to doctors about how you really need to watch like being an egomaniac because, of course, obviously medical professionals or I mean, Maybe we all know the that. cliche movie of like the heart surgeons or the brain surgeons that are these egomaniac, egotistical people. Have you seen House? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was interesting. You know, the the article itself went into like why it was dangerous and what was unhealthy about it and how people around you don't want to work with you anymore. So that was pretty interesting. That's super interesting. And I had a really egotistical doctor, so I might have to send him that link. Yeah. So signs that you are an egomaniac. You are very impatient. Check. It says that impatience. <laughs> yeah. Egotists think they know everything. Therefore, they're very impatient with people who take time to complete tasks or learn something new. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. Double, double check. <laughs> yeah. I have both of those. You are too defensive. Are you always quick to blame others for everything, yet always have a good reason for why your tasks are performed well? Do you consider others incompetent when they make mistakes, yet always have an excuse when you fall short? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, I, I'm getting better. With yes. This. 
it's still there, but I'm getting better. So, and, and that's what, like we talked about earlier. I can, when I was answering some of these things, I was reflecting back on, you know, what I used to feel like early in recovery and early in my life and how I've felt in the last couple years. I definitely think I've gotten a lot better at specifically that, you know, like I make mistakes and other people make mistakes and that's okay. You know, my impatience depends on the day, but with that part, I think I do a lot better. And I think that's from step work, just, you know, doing an eighth step, realizing that I'm human and I make mistakes even with my best intentions and then going back and making amends for those mistakes and realizing a lot of times my thoughts most of the time were good and my intentions were good. It wasn't like I was out to hurt people or make mistakes, but the end result still sucked. <laughs> so I went to high school with this guy and I was a really small guy in high school, right? And then I ended up, you know, running into him later down the line. We did some work together and I was telling him one day, I'm like, man, I, I, I don't know this gym stuff, whatever. Cause I had gotten pretty big. Right. And I'm like, yeah, you know, look, I, I can go in the gym and, and I can lift, you know, this amount of weight or whatever. And, but I'd really, I get on a job site and I don't really feel any stronger than anybody else. Right. I just don't think it's that big a deal. And he's like, maybe it's because you started from being so weak. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it hurt my feelings a little bit, but it kind of makes sense. I look at like my ego growth in recovery and I'm like, holy fuck, I've made these huge strides, right? To be so much better with it. But I guess I started so skewed to the <laughs> ego side that it's really <laughs> right. not that much better in the long run. Yeah. But that's what we're shooting for. Improvement. That's yeah. all we can do. We can be those assholes out there running around not improving at all. There's definite improvement. <laughs> yeah. There's no doubt about that. Number three, you constantly complain. Do you immediately start complaining as soon as things start going wrong? When working on a team, do you blame everyone else for failure or and shortcomings? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to let my wife listen to this episode. <laughs> oh, this is fucking terrible. Dude, so look, my son and I both play this game, Rocket League, and you're on a three-person team. It's basically soccer, but you're in a car uh, in an arena. <laughs> It's fun as hell. Anyway, anytime my team is losing, it's obviously the other two guys' fault. <laughs> now, you can see your scores throughout the game, and there's times I'll be in games where one guy has like 220, the other guy has 180, and I have like 36, and I'm still blaming them. <laughs> I swear it's their fault. My son has never played a game where it wasn't the other two teammates' fault, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, wow. So number four, you argue frequently. Egotists place blame on everything but themselves. This tends to make them confrontational. Fuck this episode, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with this shit? <laughs> wow. Uh, I feel personally attacked. Uh, <laughs> Five, you never apologize. An egotistical person never apologizes for anything. Oh, I apologize today. They don't believe they ever do anything wrong. There, you do that. I know you. I think you are an apologizing. Person. I do apologize today. Yeah. I can't say I always see when I'm wrong, but when I do, <laughs> I apologize for sure. Uh, six. You are very judgmental. Who are you to judge <sighs> others? <laughs> Apparently, there's a lot of work still to be done. And see, I laugh because I am all of those things too. And the reason I laugh is because it's so funny. Like. You know, again, my ego tells me that I have all this growth and I'm <laughs> in this great place. Yeah. And then it's like I run through most of my days like angry and judgmental <laughs> at other people and how stupid so many other people oh, are man. and how difficult they make my life. Yes. <laughs> Those bastards. <laughs> oh, this episode hurts my heart. <laughs> hurts my ego for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so that was it. Those six. I think I was a solid five out of six. <laughs> five and a half? Yeah. Five point eight? I don't know. I'm up there. So how do we fix it? Now, yeah. What's the what's the steps to fix it? God, I hope there's some steps to help. Oh shit. Okay. Ways to keep your ego in check. And Ooh. again, a lot of these we see through step work and through the process of, you know, our work in the fellowship, but it's not always that there are other things uh that help to know that you are a small grain of sand in the universe so it's like humility you know understanding that we are not 
all that matters. We are really probably a pretty insignificant or inconsequential person in the world. There's a quote about that. Something about, remember at any point in time when life's overwhelming, you're like a speck of carbon dust on a fucking rock hurtling through space at, you know, a billion miles per hour or whatever. (laughs) and, And nobody gives a shit or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So being in that state of humility, that helps understanding that we're just part of a much bigger picture, a much larger thing. I am not the beach. I am just a piece of sand. Recognize that others have helped you get where you are oh yeah there's no denying that there's been a lot of help in my life every fucking step of the way so maybe it's not that i like i don't feel like i have any argument against these i'm in total agreement maybe i just need to remind myself of them more often and that's what i took out of most of this it's like the process of recovery teaches me to continually strive to be better and i can do that by just reminding myself of some of these concepts, you know, whether it's in the morning through prayer or meditation or when I start my day, each day, like it's that just for today saying we have, it's like I need to consistently remind myself to keep myself in check because if not, the self-centered part of my disease sort of creeps back in and before I really recognize it, I again have put myself as the most important person in the universe. Right. Like I don't consciously do it. It's sort of subconsciously. Why is everybody getting in my way on my way to work? Well, don't they know I'm running late? Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> some of us have places to be. I'm hitting every goddamn red light. <laughs> like <laughs> the red light people are out to get me. <laughs> the red light mafia. <laughs> Realize everyone is of equal importance and we all have value. That's so fucking hard to believe. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I immediately thought, equal importance for what? Because <laughs> like, like, I don't think everyone has equal importance. <laughs> like, God, I'm a social worker, and that one's still hard to practice. <laughs> know that nothing is permanent. Mm, yeah, that's one I'm actually working on doing more now. A lot of the stuff I'm listening to and you know, the, the Buddhist line of thinking of like getting in touch with my own death and my own impermanence and basically how little all that's going to matter in the grand scheme of things. I'm trying to work on that. I've shared that frequently as part of my recovery story. Like I've said, you know, if I look at my life over a five year period, you know, what's going on in my life now compared to five years before that, compared to five years before that. And I mean, totally as far as what issues are a major problem, what areas are going great, you know, what's going on in this relationship or that relationship, because in the moment, it feels like whatever's going on is overwhelmingly powerful and, you know, either great or painful or needs to happen, you know, and then when I look back five years ago, it's like, oh, shit, you know, whatever was going on in my life back then, like none of that's relevant now Mm -hmm. and whatever's going on now didn't even exist then (laughs) right and so it's an interesting exercise for me and i still try to do it every couple of years kind of look back to where i was five years before so everyone's equal remind myself have friends that will be honest and intimate with you and this had more to do with people that will give you like honest self-assessment obviously in recovery we would hopefully have sponsors that are doing that that are giving us honest self-assessments or or giving us an honest view of ourselves yeah um but having a support group or a network of people around that aren't a bunch of yes men (laughs) right i mean we see how that plays out for like movie stars and reality tv shows maybe that become president (laughs) (laughs) that uh you surround yourself with all these yes people and and i don't think they do it intentionally but you surround yourself with people that only tell you the good things about yourself and then you that's what you think about yourself it's definitely hard no one's telling you you're a fucking idiot (laughs) it's hard to tell people the uglier side of themselves no matter how close we are to them like even I, i still and that's the hard part of telling them to begin with and then it's also the hard part of i still want them to like me (laughs) and i'm not sometimes worried they won't like uh, right but yeah no i i I feel like i have that too i have a definite group of people that will tell me about me and it may not be one person in all areas like it could be different people in different areas you know for example i can have probably conversations with my wife about our relationship and she'll surely tell me what areas i'm falling short (laughs) 
you know, right. in, you know, maybe in my marriage or in my relationship. Whereas, you know, I can talk to friends or someone like you about whatever parenting or recovery and be able to kind of get a different opinion on what I could be doing different or should be doing different. So, well, and I think that's even a step beyond what that healthy thing said that healthy thing was just like hey ways to combat this or to have these people in your life that will tell you the truth but i think it's even better like you just mentioned to seek out other opinions and i find that i do that not all the time or anything but i definitely seek out information from people when i feel like i'm in a situation that i'm unsure of or that i'd like a second opinion like this is how i feel but something seems like it could be off with that what do you think and so I frequently seek out outside opinions, I think. Yeah. Seems like it. I think I do as well. I try to explore, like I say, new ideas and things I don't know a lot about (laughs) to try to get some information, you know, to get some knowledge and get some different perspectives on life. And the last thing they said was be introspective about your shortcomings. Hmm. Which obviously we do that work specifically in recovery. I mean, that's a major one of our steps, yeah. you know, looking at our shortcomings, examining our defects of character, um, the one I'm supposed sharing to be, right? that with other people. You know, those things are a critical part of recovery. And again, for addicts, I think it's important because we are so self-centered and we do spend so much time, you know, thinking of ourselves and about ourselves and how the world affects us you know specifically we put ourselves as the most important person of the universe and i'm not sure i mean we talked about how smartphones have all these addictive properties and brain changing abilities i'm not sure we're all not addicts at this point whether we're in a (laughs) fellowship or use drugs or not so i would say this applies to everybody I, i think we all struggle with ego to some extent whether and like you said especially with that new view of like the people who feel Or whose life story is that I'm not good enough and I'm less than everybody and I'll never measure up. I think if we know that's ego as well, then who doesn't qualify on one side of that spectrum? And with talking with you a lot lately, I've realized that my optimism is turning to pessimism. Oh, people, No, not really. But I have noticed, I guess I would consider more what I would say healthy people are less popular than I thought like (laughs) and not in like a popularity contest I just mean in the number of them that exist in the world (laughs) so so I tended to think that most normal people outside of recovery were healthy people and I guess that's changing over time to be we have a pretty sick population of people at least here in the United States you know there are a lot of unhealthy sick people And unfortunately, I don't think our society is doing a lot of corrective action in those areas. I think we're actually going the other way. Yeah, give me more, give me now, and I deserve it. Yeah, with the sort of on-demand lifestyle that we've created, most of us get into this place of, and me included, without even recognizing it sometimes, If I order something, I expect to get it in a day or two. I mean, if anything is longer than two days out to have shipped and delivered to my house, I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and it should be free, (laughs) like, you know, or movies. When I want to watch a series, I get mad that if they have an actual series where the shows come out like one a week, I'm like pissed. I'm like, you need to give me the whole thing right now so that I can watch it exactly when I want. (laughs) Like those areas I don't think help. So I found this the other day and I'm not I'm not so much mad that it takes time to make movies and stuff like that. I just there's all these movies on the horizon and for whatever reason, I don't know if we just talk about it a lot more now, but from the moment they announce that they're going to have a movie or a TV show, there's like I don't know, a year long process of planning it out, casting it, figure out where you're going to like set the location at, what it's going to be about, all this shit. That's all in news now. And so I'm hearing about these movies that I want to see that are like not coming out till 2023. And I'm like, don't (laughs) fucking tell me now. Like it just annoys the piss out of me. I'm like, tell me like a month before it comes out so I can get hyped about it. Don't tell me now. I'm reading about it. I'm like, I want to see this shit. Right. It's not coming out for three years. Why? Don't tell me now. And (laughs) possibly that is because businesses are catering 
to us. They want us to feel like they're doing everything for us. They want us to feel that like you're the most important. We care about what you want. We care about, you know, giving you everything right away. <laughs> like that's how they get your money. You know, that's yeah. how they suck your money is by feeding that ego. And then you see it with different advertising, different business models, different you know, social media platforms. I don't think that's healthy for most people. I mean, if you look at the world of memes, memes aren't popular because nobody gets them. Memes are extremely popular because they're so relatable. And if you look at the top memes, they're all about indulging ourselves, whether that's binge watching shows or Netflix or drinking alcohol, like they're all about finding some way to escape life. And I feel like they're universally accepted as relatable by like 99% of the population. So I, I don't, like I said, these healthy people, they're probably living in a fucking cabin in the woods somewhere with no Wi-Fi and don't connect to people. I, I don't know where they're at. Yeah. And we have everyone now can go out and make a podcast oh as we did. God. Oh, listen to us. We're important. We have right. shit to say. It's valuable. All these assholes <laughs> making know? podcasts. And websites and Facebook pages where they get to spout whatever their opinion is about whatever they feel in that day. And, yeah. you know, it's it creates an attitude of that we are more important than we really are, you know, or we feel we're more important than we really are. No doubt. Those things are, are pushing us into an unhealthy arena with our egos. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. You learned today what we got to do. And apparently it's not just believing in these factors that can assist us in you know finding a healthier amount of ego if that's the goal maybe once we get there we'll find that we want no ego i don't know but we I, we can't just believe in them we have to regularly think about them and bring them into our conscious life that's what i took out of that like i feel like those are all beliefs of mine now i just need to think about them more and consciously and actively try to keep them in mind as i'm living I, i'm guessing that's the goal to to make me more well, less ego, more healthy. I would agree for myself. That's the case. I need to remind myself more regularly, like practice keeping my ego in check. You know, yeah. it'll grow out on its own if I don't kind of watch it's it. A fucking cancer. Yeah. I'm going to put those tips on my home screen on my phone or something. So I see them <laughs> like every day. I need them. And see, it's almost more of a motivation for me to put that list of shit that your ego's out of check. Like, that hurts more, you know? Like, that's like, ooh. <laughs> like, are you angry all the time? Are you argumentative? <laughs> like, are you judgmental? Like, I am judgmental as fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> that did kind of hurt shit. reading that list. Just so, a little. I, I'm more motivated by the pain than mm. the positive. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't see. I don't know. You got anything else about the ego? You, you no. Found? No, that was good. Yeah, I, I, this was great. <laughs> Made me laugh if nothing yeah. else at myself. Yep. Which that should be good for ego. <laughs> there we go. So that was a great episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to share with all the egomaniacs in your life that you think could benefit or just might enjoy listening. Feel free to reach out with any of your ego moments or tips and tricks for dealing with ego we'd love to hear all that you can find us on twitter instagram facebook reddit wherever the hell you're at we're some version of recovery sort of if you search it you will find us i assure you and now of course recovery sort of dot com all one word do that and we will see you next week did you like this episode share it with people you think might get something out of it Check out the rest of our episodes at recoverysortof.com. Also, while you're there, you can find ways to link up with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, anything. We're always looking for new ideas. Got an idea you want us to look into? Reach out to us. <laughs>